Greetings to all our learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic that we shall deliberate is theories of migration. Dear learners, this topic shall be of immense use for learners from the discipline of political science, international relations, sociology, development economics, amongst others. In the lecture, we shall attempt to analyze how migration particularly looking at international migration is such a diverse and complex phenomenon. In the lecture, we shall explain that how movement by people from one place to another, particularly different nations with the intention of settling temporarily or permanently in the new location has important bearing for global world, international security, respective nation states and the bigger question of global governance, culture amongst others. In the lecture, we shall look at some important aspects namely structural equilibrium and its relation to migration with respect to global economy, issue of emigration, emigration, diaspora, globalization, the distinction between forced and voluntary migration flows which have a bearing on national and international governance issues. At the outset, let us ask ourselves, how do we define migration? Migration or human migration? Human migration involves permanent change of residence, place of living by an individual or a group. Now this transition must be different from, from terms like that we must have heard like nomadism, migrant labors, commuting, tourism which also involves change of accommodation, nature of residence. However, when this transition is of permanent change of residence that comes under the category of human migration. The topic of migration as we begin the analysis it points towards important issues namely issue of state power, the bigger picture of political membership, justice both inside and outside state borders. Now, let's try to contextualize international migration study. Dear learners, we all know that you know movement of people from one territory to other has always existed in human history. But when we look at contemporary world history, specifically with reference to international relations, it is after the Second World War where international migration has been linked with increasingly complex set of national and international policies which are aimed at regulating, controlling immigration, admissions and flows. International migration, dear learners, it's diverse and a complex terrain. So therefore, as we delve into theories of migration, we have to first begin with the assumption that is no single theory can explain all. Then related to it is the phenomena that there are variety of perspectives involved, variety of perspectives offering different explanations in terms of what it actually involves for the movement of people from one terrain to the other. Related to the concept of migration are two important concepts namely immigration and emigration. For the purpose of conceptual analysis and clarity thereof, we look at the definition. Immigration is the process through which individuals become permanent residents or citizens of another country. Now, it's very important to add a very important clause here that it is this process of emigration that has also resulted in development of multicultural societies. 
Next term, emigration. Dear learners, emigration implies departure from a country for life or residence into another. Related to it, it's the concept of diaspora. Diaspora implies populations such as members of an ethnic or religious group that originated from the same place but dispersed to different location. The word diaspora comes from ancient Greek word diaspiro meaning to sow over. Today with the amb, you know when we are seeing looking at the global world issues of immigration, emigration, diaspora have a bearing on foreign affairs apparatus, policy making realms at both national and global level for respective nation states. So two concepts which are very important while we are trying to understand theories of migration namely when we look at the focus towards the meso theory dear learners it's that of systems and networks migration is assumed to occur within a migration system now what could this migration system be it could be group of countries linked by economic political cultural ties as well as migration flows related to it is the concept of networks networks refer to a set of individual and collective actors like actual and potential migrants their respective families firms groups and the multiple social and symbiotic ties that link them together once formed networks can substantially influence as the theory states the pattern the direction the volume of migration flows providing resources that help people to move and what could be things that move information contacts economic and social support related to it is the picture that the resources that flow through the networks make moving a more con attractive and feasible option for other members of a network and this helps in generating in what has been termed by academia and social science research that is chain migration how do we define chain migration the phenomenon of serial large scale migration from one particular area to the other the meso theories as we are deliberating we must point out that they reject the macro focus towards the push and the pull factors the meso theories instead they locate migration flows within a complex system of linkages between states now let's take our discussion forward on theories of migration an important perspective on why people move out of one particular nation state or residence to another area has been offered by the neo classical theory this theory assumes that labor markets and economies move towards equilibrium a state of balance in the long run through trade and migration what are migrants migrants are the rational actors what are the migrants decisions when which implies their movement from one economy to the other market it's the quest for higher earnings so they move from societies where labor is abundant and wages are low to say a case where labor is scarce in society and wages are high migration systems and network as we just discussed they link they provide the link between people at origin and destination migratory movements from this perspective are often connected to prior long standing links it could be commercial or cultural relationship 
So migration systems and networks they look at the link between people at origin and the destination. As we know that today the uh, neoclassical perspectives in all realms have witnessed modification. So therefore new economics also which is a variation of the neoclassical theory adds the social dimension, the societal dimension decision in the bigger picture to offer explanation as to why people migrate. Looking at it is the another perspective is the institutional perspective namely that one has to look at the organizations that developed alongside international migration the important role they play in migration. So from the institutional perspective one has to look at the important role organizations play to felicitate to make international migration more feasible. As we are deliberating on theories of migration an important perspective is offered by dual or segmented labor market wherein there is a highlight that there is a need for cheap workers in modern societies. Now this is related to the demand for labor in developed economies and this indeed has an effect of pulling the migrants. So what we see here is at the receiving economy the labor market is segmented. The native born have access to careers, good pay, safe working conditions. Migrants are channelized towards labor intensive secondary or tertiary sector that provide precarious jobs uh, amongst others. So what we see here is that how when we are looking at the aspect of the dual or segmented labor markets how it looks at the issue of workers in modern society the need to balance the labor market demand and supply issue migration offers a narrative and solution there. Related to the bigger picture of theories of migration another perspective comes via mobility transition. Mobility transition focus here dear learners is on the transition of countries through a series of demographic and societal stages. What we see for example every society goes through a process of demographic growth of development issues for example in the early stages featuring strong demographic growth there are rural to urban mobility followed by high net migration towards developed countries. Later advanced economy rural to urban mobility shrinks demographic growth slows down while urban to urban mobility and circular migration increases significantly. Dear learners an important perspective with reference to uh, for an explanation on theories of migration comes from world system. We all know that world system implies division of the world economy into core, periphery and the semi-periphery. The core implies the industrialized capitalist world, the developed world, the periphery implies the not, de not so developed world. So the world system offers an explanation that is migration from peripheral developing countries happens to the core capitalist one. So it's basically the resources, the quest for better opportunities that drives resources from one to the other. But at the same time when we're looking at the world system perspective and an important narrative in the world system perspective has been given by the American sociologist Emmanuel Wallerstein. Wallerstein points, that, points out that how development of the core, the industrialized world happens at the expense of underdevelopment of the periphery namely how it is the periphery that sustains the development of the core with cheap raw, uh, materials, cheap labor amongst others. The macro theories as we take our discussion forward on theories of migration, the macro theories dear learners they emphasize the structural 
objective conditions such as the push and the pull factors for migration. Let's understand what could be the push factors. Unemployment, lower wages, instance of crop failure, poor living conditions, poor health and education services, natural disasters, few facilities are some cases that push the people outside a particular terrain up the place of their residence towards new places. Related to the macro perspective, another aspect is that of the pull factor. Now push and pull factor, they can seem to be working as complementary and supplementary to each other. And we take some remarks from bbc.co.uk uh, of the pull factors, that is quest for more jobs, higher wages, better living conditions, better education and health services, better facilities, less chance of natural disasters amongst others. Related to the aspect of migration, one must understand the aspect of involuntary displacement. Now, involuntary displacement happens through factors. It could be uh, generalized violence, civil war, state repression amongst others. As we are discussing theories of migration, we take a very important work that has been offered by E.G. Ravenstein as early as 1885 who identified set of generalization looking at the picture of migration. So here we will try to look at Ravenstein's laws of migration pointing towards inverse relationship between distance and volume of migration. So what we see here is that as per this perspective, migration proceeds step by step. Every migration has a current that produces the counter current. Volume of migration increases with the process of the diversification of the economy, improvement in economy, transport facilities. So therefore, migration from this perspective occurs mainly due to economic reasons. Now, when we are having a critical analysis, let's have a critical analysis of this perspective, the very fact that migration occurs in different steps, this is difficult to be established. As we take our discussion forward on theories of migration, an important perspective also comes from the gravity model. Now, this model focuses on relationship between distance and migration. Volume of migration between any two interacting centers, this is the function of not only distance between them but also their population size. As we are discussing the gravity model, dear learners, we must take into account the work presented by W. J. Rayleigh who had first applied the law of gravitation in 1929 to the retail trade of a city centre. Now, Rayleigh's law of uh, retail gravitational and related to the, uh, it, the perspective by John Q. Stewart, an American astrophysicist in 1947, that is isomeric relationship between these concepts and Newton's law of gravitation. An important perspective that we must look into while understanding perspectives on my human migration comes from Everett Lee who proposed the theory of migration in 1966. And here in the focus here or is on, let's take into account one by one. First, factors associated with the place of origin. Second, factors associated with the place of destination. Third, intervening obstacles. And fourth, personal factors. Related to the theories of migration is another important perspective offered by Stouffer's theory of mobility. 
SA asked you for an American sociologist presented the opportunity model and this was in 1940. Here the focus dear learners is on number of migrants from an origin to a destination and it is directly proportional to the number of opportunities at the destination. So as we take into account migration, it's very important to take into account that how migration is a highly complex and diverse phenomena. While trying to take into account that what accounts for migration, one has to look at various theories of migration. When we are looking at various theories of migration, the aspect that is because being a diverse phenomena, diverse and complex phenomena, no single theory can explain all. There are varieties of perspectives involved and each theory has a valuable perspective to offer as an explanation that why human migration happens. And related to it is the aspect when we look at uh, the explanation that each perspective has to be critically analyzed. Today, no doubt with globalization, with shrinking of space and time, with the rapid movement of goods, services, ideas, today migration has become an important concern. However, with changing dynamics of international security, with the rise of traditional security dimensions, namely rise in issues concerning military security, related to it with the rise of non-traditional security dimension, namely rise of pandemics. What we see here is even movement of populations today ha is having an important bearing at national as well as global levels. And understanding of theories of migration can help the policy framework, the analyst, the research work, the academic perspective to understand that what it really involves for the people to move from one place to the other and related to it that what stakes it has for economic, political, se cultural security both at national and international level. We all know that as each theory has witnessed critical analysis. For example, if the meso theories, they reject the focus on the push and the pull factor and instead they locate migration flows within a complex system of linkages and networks between the state, one has to take into account that linkages and networks are never static. There are counter undercurrents also within the established institutional parameters, linkages and networks that must be taken into account. The new classical theory looks at labor markets and economics moving towards equilibrium through trade and migration. At the same time, one has to see that today the dynamics of global trade are much more multifaceted. Global trade has indeed magnified from the time when neoclassical theory was put forward. And with the changing dynamics of warfare also, namely saying trade war as an extension of securing national interest in global realms, the neoclassical theory also looking at commercial relationship and with respect to the bigger picture of structural equilibrium is also witnessing change. Further, with new economics adding the societal dimension, it's very important to understand that today, societal dimension has a link with the na bigger picture of globalization, nationalism, cultural ethos, need to have adequate security and which must be taken into account. The institutional perspective focusing on organizations that develop aside, we must take into account that how the institutions also, they witness change with the changes in dynamics of the context. So dear learners, what we find here is that human migration has always played 
an important role in human history. Today, migration has a bearing on national and global phenomenon for each respective nation states as well as for the world polity at large. An understanding of migration from meso theories to macroeconomic perspective of push and pull factors, migration systems and networks to new economics, redefinition of neoclassical perspective, institutional linkages, dual or segmented labor market, the bigger picture on mobility transition, the world system perspective offers different kinds of narrative to help us keep, understand human migration with focus on international migration in a comprehensive way. We hope the lecture gave you significant insights on theories of migration. We look forward to positive encouraging feedback from you all. Thank you.